I'm going to talk to you about the Sarah Brown research grant that we won the first year of it, and it was an exploration of how farm vets cope. Um, I, you know when it's Hogmanay or New Year's Eve and you get the programme and it flashes a whole pile of pictures of the news throughout the year? My presentation is going to be a wee bit like that. And it's just to say there's good, so there are a lot of photos, a lot of stuff, um, and some of it I feel bad because each slide means there's a lot. You know, and it's not the same as some of these news stories, there's a lot. So I don't mean to dismiss or under... And under appreciate the thing, so, but if you forgive that speed, just to fizz through. Uh, so I want to say about what we hope to do, what we did, what we found out, and what we produced. I have scoured the internet for some photos, so you never know, there might be, there's a lot of photos of vets, so if you see yourself, uh, I apologise. So what we hope to do, we tried, we wanted to have a positive approach to thinking about what helped vets cope, um, and to share that uh, with other vets, that, and these things could then be used to maybe give tips or advice to others who were struggling. Um, and we really wanted to have vets involved in a kind of co-production approach as much as possible. Quick, this is the slide that yeah, it's too small to read. Uh, so the three things that we I wanted to talk to you about today is that there were three trigger points that we felt that emerged from some of the conversations we had with vets. So it was the initial experience after graduation, approximately about five years in the job and the move to management. So for, uh, so for some of the people in this room, this is not news. Uh, it will just reinforce what they know already. The word shell shock was used by um, at least one person in terms of their experience of finding themselves in practice, uh, in a farm practice. And uh, so they talked about the difference between being at vet school and being at practice. And there was a lot around that, you know, so when there was the, all the knowledge that they had graduated with, which was highly esteemed, and then they would find themselves speaking to these farmers who uh, had a lot of different type of knowledge and didn't necessarily value the young graduates in this, you know, there was a bit of a gap there. Um, it really depended on, you know, where the, what kind of practice they went to and sometimes they lost all their peer support that they had or they were far removed geographically um, from their social support networks and families. The next trigger point was five years in, and it was a kind of, is this it kind of awareness? So pay and working conditions, people think that vets get paid a lot of money, but some of these graduates were, did not experience that. Long hours and uh, lower pay. They would think about some of their colleagues that they were at a uh, university with, and there was this kind of idea that they were swanning around with high paid jobs. Uh, clean, 95 type things, and their lives were so different. Um, and, and they felt a bit trapped sometimes um, because, and part of it was, a lot of their families had invested a lot in their education financially, but also they were incredibly proud of my son, daughter, child, the vet. And, you know, they, were, they, they didn't want, it was a very difficult conversation to contemplate going to your parents and saying I don't think this is really working for me so they felt trapped and just you know a lot of the work is a lot of repetition uh, blood sampling of cows you know not complex not intellectually demanding and so they kind of longed for some when there was a good bit of diagnosis to be done something complicated and that helped uh, the, the final trigger point was if they moved into a management setting. And they f that often happened with no training for them. They just were promoted. And, you know, the skills of being a good vet, not, you know, what kind of skills are needed for a good manager, there was a bit of a gap there. And, I mean, it was hard doing their job before. 
Now they were carrying the weight of their colleagues and how some of their colleagues were struggling. And uh, so, and so the responsibility they felt for their colleagues as well as the responsibility for the practice in terms of finances, keeping all these farm clients happy, not easy, the client base. And so there was even more of an imbalance between work and life. So what, what, what was good, um, people really appreciated a good team, a good supportive team was so, so critical. And they, you know, what was helpful was when they got away from the practice and had good CPD and then got together with their peers. The, so many people talked about the relationship with farmers in such a positive way. And there was, there was friendship, there was, it would go on for years and these people were, it was a personal relationship and uh, they were cool. You know, when there was cases, they worked together a lot about how to treat their, the, the livestock. The downside of it was some people really struggled to c communicate with farmers. Farmers are difficult or can be difficult. Um, they often, as I mentioned before, don't necessarily value the vet's knowledge, you know, especially if it's like a towny kind of person uh, that doesn't look the part of a good farm vet, you know. Um, and farmers are pretty cynical. It takes quite a long time to build their trust. And the vets sometimes didn't understand the communication that worked for a farmer. They were just going straight in with the clinical stuff and didn't get the how to build that relationship and found them so difficult. Um, when things go wrong, it, it was really difficult because people would, there were two aspects of this. One was they would question themselves and they would be driving away from the farm. Sometimes if this was on call at weekends, you know, it could be in the middle of the night, driving away thinking, what, what did I do? Could I have done something different? Is it my fault? Am I a rubbish vet? And a whole pile of horrible self-questioning, lack of confidence. And the other aspect of when things went wrong is how frustrating it was when they had previously spoken to that farmer about what their practice was, the husbandry or what they were doing, and the farmer had not, this whole thing was preventable. And that was really difficult and challenging for individuals to cope with. The joy of a live birth was phenomenal. Um, a live calving especially and people who were over 40 years in practice still talked about the buzz they got when they were got a live birth but that thing about leaving the farm and driving a long long way there, there's things associated with that in terms of milling over milling over you're by yourself a lot of the time you don't have contact with other people not the best time for a lot of people and also they can be exhausted and they can be driving narrow rural roads um, and for many many miles some of the on-call practice coverage areas are vast so they could be hundreds of miles in one weekend <clears throat> and then it was quite difficult going home at night um, to get to sleep because their minds were full of all this stuff they uh, found it hard to sleep and especially if they were going home alone sometimes um, and even if there was somebody else they didn't necessarily want to waken them up and tell them about it all. Um, the health and safety aspect was interesting where they would it was a, that difference between their vet school practice and farm practice so they would arrive on a farm and the the cow wasn't even in any kind of whole, um, housing or any what's that, crush, not even in a crush. And they were going to have to um, operate sometimes in the middle of a field. And sometimes, depending on what type of farm it was, sometimes if it's hill farms, the cows aren't used to people that often, you know, that much contact with people. And they were really fearful for their health and safety. But it was incredibly challenging to talk about it because the farmer themselves was exposed to exactly the same risk and also there could be a lack of 
sympathy in terms of the practice because this is part of the job and uh, they didn't want to go and have to say to the farmer, right, you're going to have to provide better. It was very hard to walk away from a sick animal, even although they knew they could if it wasn't appropriate, if they were, if they was, uh, they were going to be too at risk. Very difficult to walk away. So, what we so these are some of the things we found out um, that it, there's a lot of time that it was it was very useful if people knew when they were going to be on call and they knew what their work patterns were going to be, so that they could book a, a weekend away with family, friends, or a holiday, and so actually having a really dependable rota where they knew when their time off was that was useful. Um, <clears throat> okay, oh, there was a five minutes. So. Oh, was it? Did you do a one? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so there was lots of really good things that were found out, and it's on our on the website how farm vets cope, and there's direct quotes. And the two take-home messages are: <clears throat> even when you're driving a, a lo uh, driving away, feeling alone, that actually. Uh, there's an awful lot of other vets who are in exactly the same position and you're not alone in dealing with all these challenges and never ever to feel trapped that there's so many transferable skills and uh, there's always opportunities to have a different type of future so thank you very much <laughs>